Yeah. Yeah, I made it last night in the airport. While I was wait so I, 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 I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a few wages. Um, it's mediated through predominantly through institutions. So it's mediated through investment funds um, and things like that. I mean, uh, even the one percent tend to. Not so directly. Like, so, so some of it's just an idea thing, yes. It's not like money in the bank. Okay, but yeah. anyway, I'm interested in the relationship between those two things and you know what happens when the wages get high, how does that affect that little cycle there? Um, and thinking about you know money, um, we listen to people talk about during the same freaky era, you had the taxes on the very wealthy going from being what, 95% or 90%? It peaks out at 93%. Really to, yeah. to being very relatively low today. And I'm just interested in how that affects Yeah, I mean, I think part of it is, you know, where, where do people spend their money, right? So Robert Frank writes about this, that, that when you give rich people a lot of money, it leads to asset price growth, right? They, they tend to buy houses, horses, yachts, you know, stuff that is unique. It's a luxury economy, right? Gucci, couture, stuff like that. So it's a luxury economy. We give money to normal people. They go and they buy mass-produced goods, they buy mass-produced services. Um, it actually produces a lot more growth. So it's this classical Keynesianism, right? Um, just to confuse you, to confuse myself politically even more. It's this classical marginal MPC, right? Marginal propensity to consume. Um, so I think it's important. Um, it's also important to understand why that experience of the 93% shapes the policies that come. So like Ronald Reagan, for instance, I mean the, the classic story, he was a he was a union leader, right, in the Screen Actors Guild, but he wouldn't make additional movies every year because when he got kicked up into that, the margins took away all his money, right? So he uses this, and then he works at GE Theater, right, as a shill for GE. Um, so using words like shills to reestablish my left credentials, I think. Um, so as a shill for GE, um, this, this brings him about, right? And he says to Nancy, why do I say these things and then go home and do this other thing? And, this, and in Blair's, this is actually true, right? And so that when he comes into power, this is this experience. This is why experience matters. Experience matters, not just rationality, not just reason, not models, but the yeah, but the yeah, the, the, the feeling. This is what we were talking about before with, with the sort of why these post-war guys thought they didn't have to fend off Japanese steel, you know, um, and actually why these banks begin to lend to consumers in the 1930s, like Citibank. I write about this in my first book that. Uh, it's part of a government program. They never would have lent to consumers before then, but they have this experience that it's risk-free, and then they start to do it, and they make a lot of money. Um, 